So we're going to be talking about the fifth season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How many seasons? Gossip Girl, the first season. And personal effects, dark art, this book. And it's a very interesting book. I should show you uh, why it's interesting. If you open it up, it has a bunch of different, like it has a case file in here, and there's a whole bunch of things. There's a guy's identification, and there's a bunch of pictures and death certificates and all sorts of things in here. So it's, uh, I was very intrigued by it when I um, got this probably from a library book sale, but it's a library discard in any case. And I don't think anybody else has looked at it. Yeah, well, that's pretty sad. Which, it, the author, um, I mean, they works totally to my taste, but uh, they did a good job. There weren't too many spelling mistakes that I found and stuff like that. That's pretty sad, though. They're really sad. Um, what can I say? Anyway, nowadays... Uh, but with this book, I thought it was going to be like... The spine says science fiction, and I was like... Hmm. Didn't and then, way, no, because I was looking at the thing and I'm like, it's going to be a mystery and it's going to be awesome. I get mm -hmm. to solve this mystery. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. You don't even need to look at, like, there are phone numbers you can call, websites that you're supposed to visit. Um, well, did you look those up book? today or no, were you too busy doing that? I forgot, thing? so I can't review that part of it. Well, Maybe I'll talk well, about it later. Yeah, of course. It's your book, so. Yeah, but, um, I didn't. But uh, I looked at all the things in the folder first before I read the book. Yeah, yeah. I was looking, I'm trying to solve the mystery just by looking at the personal effects, right? And um, I was, I noticed that the uh, mother's maiden name seemed, her last name seemed to be Spanish, even though the death certificates were her and her daughter. Um, said that they were not Spanish. And so I was thinking, oh, this is going to be part of the mystery. No mystery. Hmm. Anyway, um, it is an interesting book. Not nearly as interesting as I hoped. As it maybe could have been. Yeah, as it should have been. Given, I mean, it was a very um, novel, novel idea. And it just didn't pan out. But um, anyway, there was a lot of mention of um, popular culture and stuff from okay. that I recognize. Mm -hmm. Different from a YouTube a lyrics era. or something like that, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, would I recommend it? Well, it didn't take me that long. And it's about 300 pages. Three and eleven, I think. Oh, I'm gonna say another thing about it. It's written, um, so it looks like it's on loose leaf paper, lined paper, but it doesn't yeah, we, match up, and it doesn't. Well, that's it's, kind of yeah. It actually looks junky, and yeah, yeah. the paper is kind of. It doesn't feel like regular. I don't know. I just don't like a the feel trashy? of it. Can I have a seat? It feels well. It feels too. Maybe too high quality, too too smooth. I don't know. I don't know, but it just doesn't feel right to me. And um, but that's just my whatever. And the artwork in here is hideous. Yeah, it's absolutely true. dreadful. It's um, I I wouldn't even call it artwork. It's that bad. So, I think if I cared a little bit, I. Able to do better. And I don't understand why this J.C. Hutchins has a way bigger name than Jordan Is Wiseman. Is that the artist? I don't know. I forgot to look that up too because yeah, I was going to look that up to okay. make sure. We'll have to look that up. And Jordan Wiseman is the the novel writer. Mm. So what? I don't what understand gives? this. What gets? So I have to look into it further. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Opie, stop that right now always scratches my door and I have great big 
grooves in the door and the door frame where he tries to claw through the see he's mm -hmm. talking now. Mm -hmm. He's telling me off. Mm -hmm. yeah, but he claw, tries to claw through the doors mm -hmm. and it's amazing how much damage he's done. And now he's mad at me because I yelled at him. Anyway, uh, Gossip Girl is, it was tough for us to watch. It's, um, it's a kind of, let's see, when was the date on this one? 2007, 2008. And so just before this book was written, I think. Mm. And, um, I don't know. The acting isn't so bad. I tend to hate all the characters, so mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. they're doing maybe a good job, it. or maybe they're just mm -hmm. awful. Uh, maybe they're cast well. Who knows? Maybe they're cast well. Mm -hmm. But one thing about it I noticed is Buffy's sister is in this oh, girl, go. and she's a, not a very nice person. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what else would I say about Gossip Girl? Well, I wasn't believing the whole idea, like it's supposed to be Gossip Girl's this blogger that blogs about these rich and famous, whatever, New York, Madison Avenue lunch. sort of, yeah. High school students. Yeah. And I just, I was like, well, it couldn't be that hard to figure out who Gossip Girl is because she'd have to be there all the time when this was, but they actually... Um, Gossip Girl relies on tips from people, so it, uh, that's mm -hmm. not the case, but they should have explained that earlier, because after getting into it after from the beginning, I was like, well, I may as well turn this off. Wow, is this stupid. And James's mm -hmm. comment was, teenagers are stupid. <laughs> when we were yeah. watching. Well, that includes me, but I'm not <laughs> It was very hard for us to get through. Um, but, yeah, teenagers are stupid part of growing up, you learn. Mm. Or you don't. Mm -hmm. you know. um, but anyway, I don't know what else I was going to say about Gossip Girl. Oh, they should have ended it at the end of, I think it's, was there 60 DVDs in this or five? Anyway, um, at the second to last, end of the second to last. Mm. Uh, because at that point, you're like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, is she going to be charged with murder? Hmm. And that's important. Yeah, that might bring you back from there. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Instead, they wrapped it up in a place where it's like, oh, well, who cares? Mm -hmm. Which, boy, that was stupid. Yeah. Which is kind of like the run of the series. Yeah. Yeah, who cares? So. so, now we're talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There we go. This was not my favorite segment. season. Fifth season. Mm -hmm. But it does have my favorite episode in it. And I'll tell you why it's not my favorite season. So, I'll tell you first the episode. My favorite episode was 16. Mm -hmm. Episode 16. And uh, I just cried when I watched that one. And I was a huge fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's a very good season. It basically... Um, a very good series. Series, yeah. Very good series. Thank you for correcting me. Um, I, there was so much going on in Buffy that I could identify with at the time. And I mean, my dad had died of brain cancer. It wasn't sudden it took forever and it was awful um he was in a lot of pain anyway uh, and um i mean i as soon as they added buffy's sister i was like oh i didn't like it. i didn't like her sister as the, the actress i didn't like the character, I thought, wow, nobody would want to save that sister. So, they'd have to do a better job putting a sister in a family that Buffy would actually want to save. Anyway, um, 
And I felt this season, maybe even the fourth season actually, but I felt like this season for sure on, um, with the addition of Dawn, they were adding characters that they were thinking, oh, she's going to be, we're going to make her huge, so we're going to start her off here, and then she'll catapult into other roles and whatever, right? And that's the feeling I got from her. I did not care for her in the role, and um, she actually made the rest of the series kind of suck. Just her, her presence. Even though I, I love the series, and um, whatever. It, it didn't make it suck entirely, just a little a little more sucky because she was there. And then they added, like, um, in the end, there was the the last season with the preacher character. Oh my gosh, was he ever awful. And he was the one who went on to do uh, that mystery series where they didn't get along at all and the woman would, like, Not kick that down the door. Not ugly and it's like, bozo yes. that looks like a bad yes. imitation of Elvis. Oh. He's so bad. And what was yep. he on? Farscape or something? I don't know what he was on. Firefly? Some stupid space show mm -hmm. that no one watched that they kept advertising on Space Channel. Mm -hmm. To pretend that oh everybody likes this show and nobody liked that show whatever it was he was awful mm -hmm. so anyway they trotted him out into Buffy so I think they were using Buffy as like a, a way to machine. yeah get actors into other roles and they were awful actors mm -hmm. they never should have been in other roles because they weren't didn't deserve them they weren't worthy of any roles mm -hmm. I don't care how good they were on the ca casting couch. They shouldn't have damaged the show. Mm. Anyhow, having said that, I still have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Even I watched the, I can't remember, the episode just before my favorite one. The one about the robot. I, don't know. I watched that this morning, and I liked it every bit as much. And there's, you know, there are times when I've felt in my life, um, this is what I was built to do, and I haven't been able to do it. So what use am I? You know, may may as well just power down, right? But the thing is, is I'm built for many things. I'm. Um, I, I'm a great big walking island that holds a whole bunch of living organisms. And if, if I don't take care of them, well, that'd, I'd be like a, a mass murderer of all my probiotic bacteria and whatever. So, gotta, gotta look out for them. Because who else will? Anyway, um, with Buffy, I've, it's it's funny. I I I don't know if I really identify with Buffy, but I identify with aspects of all of the characters. I think, and um, maybe not Dawn because she sucks. But well, her name is like I I think that's my true name. So um, so maybe even her. Don Jewel, yeah? No. Don Bell? No. Okay. But, um, in this season of Buffy, the fifth season, there's an awesome character, Ben slash Glory. And it's interesting because they look similar and everything. They're supposed to be the same being, just, or I guess two different beings in the same body, whatever. And Glory always reminded me of um, my ex's sister. And um, he and his sister looked exactly the same when they were young. And they were very good looking. Um, I always thought his sister was a total goddess, which Glory is, right? And um, and they 
but my ex and his sister had very different personalities, like Glory and Ben. So I kind of relate to that in this season. And um, anyway, I don't know what else to say about it. You want to talk about COVID or something? I don't know if it's more of the same. That's keep on mounting up. They're not taking it seriously enough in Alberta. I just shiver in fear. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to happen two weeks after Monday? I think that, that's when they open up the schools. Isn't mm -hmm. that's the first of September? Yeah, I'm getting as much grocery shopping as I can get done. Mm -hmm. You know, to think, oh, I need this, and then go out and get a bunch of that or whatever. If I've forgotten, because um, I'm concerned too. And um, yeah. there's, I mean, they they keep ignoring the fact that um, there are a lot of people who are asymptomatic mm -hmm. and just spreading it, mm -hmm. and so. Like, I was listening to um, one of the, was she a teacher or was she a principal? Who was she? Somebody talking about the school system anyway. Somebody talking Someone about should know them. better. And she was saying, well, we're going to have um, al alcohol, dis like um, hand sanitizer at the door when they come and when they leave. And, this, and it's like, okay, a kid is going to be hand sanitizer if you watch them and then all over their face. Like one minute later right and then 300 times a day because yeah. how can you possibly anyway and um, so she was saying if there was uh, if we we're gonna make sure that if a child uh, is sick then they're not pressured to come to school they should stay home and this and that and it's like okay different than any other time how and um, the thing is, if they're asymptomatic, they're going to be coming in with COVID and spreading it around anyway, Contents. right? So yeah. whatever. And we were this morning we were listening to somebody speaking on behalf of WestJet, and yeah, that was amazing. He was saying, well, we're going to have the snacks and this and that, so they can take their masks off while they're eating the snacks. And it's like, what? why do they have the snacks? You know, like. Um, That's insane. Yeah, it, and James said, "Well, why not have shorter flights? If, if, if and I don't you know, can just that, pay does. more to fly, if because people don't have to, they don't have to. So um, they could have shorter flights where you won't need a meal in that amount of time, and you, you have, have to pay more <laughs> for all the, and it's going to take you longer getting up, getting down, mm -hmm. going to the, it's going to cost more, but whatever. If that's what you need." So that you don't have to take your mask off to have a snack. That's what you need to do. All the beverages need to be a straw. Stick inside your mask. Drink. That's it. I think that's going to the dogs. Mm. Oh, you dropped a sardine, did you? I don't think that one's going to make it. The dogs are going to be happy. Do you want some baba ganoush with your toast? Something like that might be appreciated. Okay. You leave what you want, I'll get more when I get in. I'll just spread it with this fork. Okay? You do what you want. Yeah. Anyway, COVID-19, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I'm finding these times, I gotta say, depressing. It's, it takes a lot to depress. It takes an immense... This is worse than cancer. I gotta <laughs> yes, say. I know. You know, when I was dying of cancer, I didn't know what I was dying of. Um, yeah, that was The depressing. thing that depressed me the most was... Well, that was depressing, but... Yeah. Was the Arab Spring. And I'm seeing all these... Stupid, stupid commentary. This is the Arab Spring. It's bringing on a new Eden in the middle. Well, I, I just said to Pauline, 
We'll be lucky to see Arab fall. It's, I, I just said it's the Arab winter. You know, I knew what would happen. And of course, ISIS, all yeah. this sort of stuff. Wow. I mean, we've already, you were talking about how Germany's had trouble with opening up the school system. They opened it up really? earlier. They have, and mm -hmm. they've had way better luck controlling COVID than. And the economic consequences, too. Yeah. So if they're having trouble with the school open, imagine what it's going to be like for Albertans. Or even Canadians. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, there were all sorts of things. I can remember being, you know, like uh, things were getting a little bit better. But you know, when we were sitting in the, in the uh, Mennonite hos hostel or something like that. Oh you yeah. You know, I, I was getting prepared. I wasn't guaranteed to prepare for this, the first stem cell therapy. And people were talking about the Occupy movement. And I said, oh, that's going to go over like a lead balloon to myself. I didn't say too much. And of course, it went over like a lead balloon. It was, you know, like lefties, please, please, stop being full lefties. You know, like uh, full lefties like Marx. We're going to bring down the whole system with a general strike. Give that stupid, stupid fantasy up. You know, I don't know when he first formulated, but he was writing in 1844, his economic manuscripts. Please, it's over a hundred years old. Demonstrations well, I think have a hard don't time with, work. Like for me, I have a hard time with age. I don't, you've asked me, how old is that for, I'm like, I don't know, 30, 50. I have a really hard time with age. And I think it might have something to do with um, being uncomfortable with numbers and math. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. but a lot of people, they can't tell. They really don't know numbers. They don't, mm -hmm. they can't tell years and stuff like that very well. I mean, if, if, um, if you said something like, Oh, um, yeah, your grandma was born in the 1920s or something like that. And then, but they might think, oh, well, they'll see some news about something in 1915 and think, oh, well, it would be about the same as whenever grandma was born. Or, and it might be a totally different place and it might be a totally different culture. And it's it'd be hard for them to relate to or whatever but and it could be something like they could see a hundred years before then and think oh well it'd be about the same as when grandma was born and they don't realize well um that there would be a lot of differences and Huge. they don't think well um of the differences between say their what their parents went through versus what they're going through or what you know what I mean? I think people really don't have a grasp on on time that way. They don't know history, so they don't know so. Mm. Well, we talk about the CBCs, it's still going? Maybe. Go ahead. You want to talk about alleged murder, alleged killing? Oh, should talk about that. How the CBC, I think it's the host, not just the... Uh, people being interviewed. That was earlier they today. They are um, calling different people murderers when they have not been convicted of murder. They, I mean, people are innocent until they're proven guilty. And even if they're cops. Yeah. So that's really, really bad. No. That's not so they were saying. Cops or a cop killed George Floyd. Okay, that's a very dangerous statement because the autopsy they said says murdered. they said murdered. They did not say killed. They said murdered. At least one time they said murdered. Yes. So again, I'm going with uh, yes. Yeah. So it's so worse than just saying killed. Killed. Killed's bad enough. Killed's I think one enough. time they said killed. Okay. I'm just trying to be careful. I try yes. not to be overstate the case. Here's the deal. The autopsy says he overdosed. 
and it was compounded by his, uh, his stress with uh, dealing with the police. It was resisting arrest. I don't know how much it was due to the knee by one of his carotid arteries or whatever happened. Um, and then here's what should anyone who jumped the gun and was rushing to judgment, like the gathering, like the gathering swine running off of the Sea of Tiberias. And yes, that's intended. You're swine. There's one EMS guy. You know, maybe he's all involved in a huge conspiracy and stuff like that. Spare me. He said, George Floyd crashed in the ambulance. Okay, well, that I means they revived I him, according to him. I don't think that it's appropriate to call anybody swine. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to it's, say it's, that. I take it back. It's funny. Yes. So. Did you know what I think? Well, you don't eat pork, so mm -hmm. it's not as bad as somebody who eats pork calling mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. but because when I think when people refer to other human beings as animals that they would kill it's bad but you wouldn't kill them no. you just don't really what I'm referring to with the gathering yeah. swine is they were occupied by demons okay. okay so that's really what I'm saying okay but I did say swine, so I take that yes, back. Uh, pigs okay. are actually nice people. So, you know, you don't want to mess around with them, but uh, especially if they're full grown or they've got feral or something like that. So yeah, look that up in your new test, okay? Gathering swine. I don't take that one back. Okay. Right away. They were pigs driven crazy, according to the story. Uh, oh yes, I remember that. By demons that mm -hmm. had been yeah. expropriated, basically. Now I want to, I want to understood. I'm an agnostic. I'm not so bad pig disease. Bad pig disease. I'm an agnostic. I don't believe in that story or anything like that. So don't go strawman. I believe um, that. There's a lot of uh, true stories in the Bible. I don't necessarily believe that. I mean, it's like you hear a whole bunch of different sides of a story, and mm. everybody has a bit different take on the story. And then well, today I figured out what happened when the sun stood still. Mm. It's a fight uh, at, at Gibeon, mm. kind of the central part of present-day so-called Palestine. Um, that's a Roman designation, it's another. And the Romans would call them as it. So to use that designation is uh, it's neo colonial as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, um, uh, Gibeon, the son was uh, Joshua, they were fighting the Canaanites. It was supposed to be the Hivites or something like that, strictly speaking, not Canaanites. Maybe more like Amorites or uh, Syrians. Anyway, um, the sun was supposed to have stood still until they won the battle. And the weird thing, God was supposed to have chucked hail down. And I just made the connection. Uh, you know, like 687 BC, uh, the Bible describes uh, Sennacherib's army besieging Jerusalem getting wiped out overnight 